Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about bile acid synthesis. So to begin, bile acids are produced from cholesterol and this process of synthesizing bile acids occurs in the liver. Now about 70 to 80 percent of liver cholesterol is converted to bile acids and there are two pathways we're going to talk about in this lesson. The classic or neutral pathway and we're also going to talk about the alternative or acidic pathway of bile acid synthesis. And we're going to talk about the differences between the two pathways a little later. Now, bile acids have specific purposes. They're important for specific reasons. One is that they are important for emulsifying fats and lipids from our diet. Another purpose of a bile acid is for the absorption of fat soluble vitamins. So they are able to emulsify fats and lipids and then they're able to aid in absorption of fat soluble vitamins. They're also um, important for the digestion and absorption of fats and lipids. They prevent a cholesterol precipitation. Remember that they are produced from cholesterol. So if there's high levels of cholesterol, they are able to be processed into bile acids. So they prevent a cholesterol precipitation. And they are also important in eliminating cholesterol. So in the process of bile acid synthesis, several structural modifications of cholesterol have to take place in order to produce a primary bile acid. So I'm going to discuss those um, modifications briefly here. We're going to talk about them later in the lesson. So first, one of the changes that takes place is that this hydroxy group pinpointed by this red arrow here has to switch its orientation to an alpha orientation. So it's a beta orientation in cholesterol, but it has to be converted to an alpha orientation in a primary bile acid. Another important modification to the structure of cholesterol is a removal of the double bond in this um, area pinpointed here with the red arrow. Also, there is a... Um, hydroxy group added in the alpha position at carbon 7 of the cholesterol molecule. So you can see it here in the primary bile acid structure. And the side chain of cholesterol is also modified and we'll talk a bit more about how it's modified later in the lesson but suffice to say that the um, side chain can be modified and it can also be conjugated to amino acids as well and we'll talk about why that occurs later. So those are the four things that occur on the cholesterol molecule or cholesterol uh, chemical structure to form a primary bile acid. So to begin with cholesterol within the liver the process of bile acid synthesis takes place via a couple of pathways. We mentioned before the classic pathway and the alternate or alternative pathway. So in the classic pathway, cholesterol 7-alpha hydroxylase enzyme or CYP7A, which is an enzyme located in the endoplasmic reticulum within a hepatocyte of the liver, acts on cholesterol to form 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol. So in this process, a hydroxyl group is added to the seventh carbon in the alpha orientation. And in this process requires an NADPH and a hydrogen ion, and this actually oxidizes the NADPH to an NADP+. Now, an important consideration with regards to this enzyme, cholesterol 7-alpha hydroxylase, is that it requires vitamin C for its function. And an also important point to note with, with regard to this enzyme is that cholesterol acts as a positive regulator of this enzyme. It actually leads to the activation of this enzyme. And this entire step, the step whereby we process cholesterol to 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol is a committed step. Once we produce 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol, that 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol is devoted to the bile acid synthesis pathway. So once we have 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol, 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol can be processed through several steps to form cholic acid. Now, this process takes several steps. It requires a couple of different enzymes. One of those enzymes is CYP8B1. Another one of those enzymes is CYP27A1. 
And these several steps require several things. It requires oxygen, it requires NADPH and a hydrogen ion, and it requires two coenzyme A's as well. So these several steps lead to um, the processing of 7-alpha-hydroxycholesterol into cholic acid. In the process, we use oxygen, we use NADPH, a hydrogen ion, and two coenzyme A's. We produce propionyl-CoA, and we utilize a couple of enzymes in these steps, CYP8B1 and CYP27A1. So I may discuss the specific details of this pathway in another lesson, but this is what's important right now, that several steps are required to process 7-alpha-hydroxycholesterol into cholic acid, and these are a couple of important enzymes in those steps. Now, 7-alpha-hydroxycholesterol can also be processed by several steps into kenodeoxycholic acid. Now, kenodeoxycholic acid, again, requires several steps in order to produce. It requires, again, the same things that we utilized for cholic acid. It requires oxygen, it requires NADPH, a hydrogen ion, two coenzyme A's. And in the process, it produces a propionyl-CoA. And again, one of the enzymes that is utilized to produce kenodeoxycholic acid is CYP27A1. So again, these pathways in producing cholic acid and kenodeoxycholic acid are very similar. Only the beginning steps that aren't shown here, the only the beginning steps in this um, several step mechanism are different. The last step is the same where it utilizes CYP27A1. And kenodeoxycholic acid and cholic acid are primary bile acids. These are the two primary bile acids that I want you to remember. Now, once we have produced these primary bile acids, they can undergo negative feedback regulation of the bile acid synthesis pathway. So cholic acid can actually um, negatively regulate cholesterol 7-alpha hydroxylase or the CYP7A enzyme. So it can actually stop production of bile acids. Once they've produced enough bile acids, it can stop the production of further bile acids. So what I've shown here is the classic pathway, but there's also the alternative pathway. And that requires an enzyme located in the mitochondria. That enzyme is known as sterile 27 hydroxylase or CYP27A1. We've talked about this enzyme before in the classic pathway, so we'll discuss it again a little bit more here. So this enzyme is located in the mitochondria. It acts on cholesterol to form 27 hydroxycholesterol. So it adds a hydroxyl group on the 27th carbon on the side chain of the cholesterol backbone of the molecule. Now this enzyme is the beginning step of the alternative pathway. But later steps, it actually takes several steps for the 27-hydroxycholesterol to be processed into kenodeoxycholic acid. One of those enzymes that's important in those several steps is CYP7B1. So CYP7B1 processes 7-hydroxycholesterol to produce kenodeoxycholic acid from the alternative bile acid synthesis pathway. So again, this is the alternative pathway in bile acid synthesis. So the first step in the alternative pathway is by utilization of sterile 27 hydroxylase or CYP27A1 enzyme that's located in the mitochondria. Eventually in this pathway, 27 hydroxycholesterol is produced and then via several steps later, and utilizing the enzyme CYP7B1, we eventually produce kenodeoxycholic acid from the alternative pathway. Of note, cholic acid is not produced from the alternative pathway. Only kenodeoxycholic acid is produced from the alternative pathway. And as we mentioned before, the pathway we discussed earlier, this is considered the classic pathway. So the classic pathway involves cholesterol 7-alpha hydroxylase or CYP7A enzyme that's located in the endoplasmic reticulum and uh, processes 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol, which eventually via several steps 
produces the two primary bile acids, cholic acid and kinodeoxycholic acid. So once we have these two primary bile acids, these can be processed further. Cholic acid can be conjugated to the amino acid glycine to form glycocholic acid. Furthermore, cholic acid can be conjugated to the amino acid taurine to form taurocholic acid. Kinodeoxycholic acid can also be conjugated to taurine and this will form taurokinodeoxycholic acid. And likewise, kinodeoxycholic acid can be conjugated to the amino acid glycine to form glycokinodeoxycholic acid. So these four, glycocholic acid, taurocholic acid, taurokinodeoxycholic acid, and glycokinodeoxycholic acid, these are known as conjugated bile acids. And the potassium and sodium salts of these conjugated bile acids are what is known as bile salts. So you might hear the term bile salts. That is what a bile salt is. It is these conjugated bile acids which are um, associated with potassium and sodium. So that is what a bile salt is. Now, what is the purpose of conjugating? Um, amino acids to the bile acids. What, what is the purpose? Well, the purpose is due to the pH of the small intestine, specifically the duodenum. So the pH of the duodenum is 6. And cholic acid has a pKa of around 6 as well. So when we actually add glycine, for instance, to cholic acid to form glycocholic acid, Glycocholic acid has a pKa of around 4, so it actually decreases the pKa of the primary bile acid. By conjugating an amino acid to the primary bile acid, it can actually decrease its pKa. Likewise, when we add taurine to cholic acid, it actually decreases the pKa of um, cholic acid to 2, which is the pKa of taurocholic acid. So what this means is that when we add um, glycine or taurine to the side chain of the primary bile acids, whether that be cholic acid or kinodeoxycholic acid, you can see here this is the uh, amino acid that's attached to the side chain through an amide linkage. This means that it decreases the pKa. So what does that mean? Well, if the conjugated bile acids have a lower pKa than the primary bile acids, they, once they actually enter the small intestine, once they enter the duodenum, which has a pH of 6, say if taurocholic acid enters the duodenum with a pH of 6, taurocholic acid has a pKa of around 2, what happens is this taurocholic acid becomes deprotonated and it actually allows it to have um, a, a negative charge. It allows it to have a negative charge and it also allows it to become more polarized and it's allowed or it allows it to actually emulsify fats better. So conjugated acids or conjugated bile acids have a lower pKa and with lower pKa's, once they reach that pH in the duodenum, if it's lower than the duodenum, it will become deprotonated. Once it's deprotonated, it will have a polar charge, which allows it to emulsify even better. So that's the whole purpose of conjugating bile acids. So likewise with taurokinodeoxycholic acid and glycokinodeoxycholic acid, these two conjugated bile acids also have lower pKa's than kinodeoxycholic acid. So that's the whole purpose of conjugating an amino acid like glycine or taurine to the side chain of a primary bile acid. So another process can take place with regard to the primary bile acids after they travel through the small intestine and enter the large intestine. Now most of the bile acids will be recycled, will be absorbed at the terminal ileum and will be recycled through the enterohepatic recirculation. We'll talk about that in another lesson. But some of the primary bile acids like cholic acid and kinodeoxycholic acid 
will be converted to other types of bile acids. So what happens is they can actually be acted on by bacterial enzymes. So bacteria that are located, um, some in the small intestine, mostly in the large intestine or the colon, they have an enzyme or some of the bacteria have an enzyme known as bacterial 7-alpha hydroxylase. This enzyme can act on these primary bile acids to form deoxycholic acid from cholic acid and lithocholic acid from the kenodeoxycholic acid. These two, uh, deoxycholic acid and lithocholic acid, these are known as secondary bile acids. So the bacteria themselves can enzymatically process the primary bile acids into the secondary bile acids. So cholic acid, for instance, if we look here on the cholic acid chemical structure, it's this 7 hyd the 7 alpha hydroxyl group is actually removed. It becomes removed from cholic acid, becoming deoxycholic acid. That's where the name comes from, deoxycholic acid. We're removing an oxygen. And the same thing happens with kenodeoxycholic acid. If we look at the chemical structure here of kenodeoxycholic acid, this 7 alpha hydroxy group is removed by this bacterial enzyme to form lithocholic acid. You see here that it's missing. And the two differences between the primary bile acids themselves are this hydroxyl group here. This hydroxyl group is missing on the kenodeoxycholic acid, and you see here it's also missing on the lithocholic acids, but it still remains on the deoxycholic acid. So those are the differences between the primary bile acids and the secondary bile acids. Anyways, guys, that was the end of the lesson. That was a lesson on bile acid synthesis. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And if you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.